Welcome. My name is Jared Palmer. Uh, we're here at React Europe 2019 with Yves Van Horne, uh, co-founder and creator of Code Sandbox. Welcome. What's up, man? Thanks for coming. Everything is going great. Thanks so a lot for having me. So you just gave an awesome, awesome talk um, about your journey with, with Code Sandbox. And so my question for you is, what's it, what was the, the road like? I mean, it, didn't, it wasn't like an overnight success. So tell, can you tell me a little bit about like, <laughs> what it was like? Yeah, it's kind of like an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Uh, because lots of things that when I started working on Code Sandbox, I didn't, didn't think it would be used that much. Um, but it started to get used more and more. And suddenly, I also uh, went on to give conference talks, which was also completely new for me. So there were a lot of firsts. Um, one of the things that was kind of like a leading thing when working on Code Sandbox, uh, which I'm trying to get rid of, is that as soon as, as, soon as I um, released Code Sandbox, um, I got suddenly a lot of attention because it got a lot of usage and I was able suddenly to talk at conferences. Right. It seemed like my self-worth was bigger because I started, because I got all these new things from Code Sandbox. I, my value was tied to Code Sandbox. Right. And that's a very tricky position to be in. Of course. Because suddenly if something bad happens to Code Sandbox, it also hits you personally very hard because you attach your self-worth to Code Sandbox. So that was something that made it an emotional roller coaster for a very long time. Every bad news would be hit very hard. Every good news would also hit very hard, which is the good thing. Uh, but nowadays, I found a way to separate the two. Healthy. And yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's, I think, the biggest thing yeah. uh, I learned from having a project that slowly grows in usage. And uh, yeah, that was the biggest thing. But in general, I've learned a ton especially with talking to people, uh, giving talks. That was something that I actually enjoy very much, and I don't think I would have experienced it without putting a project life first. It's, it's super interesting to hear you talk about that. One thing that I've always found interesting, or just with the recent announcement, that congratulations on your big raise, uh, <laughs> officially. Um, talk a little about that experience. Like, it's an open source project, right? It, it's all out there. Um, and yet, like, there's clearly a business model behind it. Just like, what's your grand vision, and how how is open source played into it? So, when starting with Code Sandbox, we tried to solve a problem that I had when working in a company, and that was uh, there was no easy way to share code between team members uh, if they wanted to quickly show something, or if they wanted to ask a question or a bug right. report. And um, I think that's also one of the reasons that. Code Sandbox grow so big. This is one of the use cases. It turned out to have many more different use cases, right. but this is one of them. And um, when we started to raise money, we went into a completely different world. Investors are very different from developers. Sure. Um, so we worked on the pitch deck and we started pitching to investors and they uh, asked very good questions and from a completely different perspective. One of the questions was, what is the going to be the business model? And that's a very good question. Right now, we're completely focusing on making it, uh, fixing kind of the use case that I described in the story where uh, sharing code between teams is important and right. there are a lot of private, for example, NPM modules that you need to, uh, as a company that you have, and maybe you want to support those. So we have something called Team Pro that we're working on. And, um, but really, Code Sandbox is right now a bit in an exploration phase. Got it. Um, we're focusing a lot on, um, growing code sandbox and making it applicable for more use cases. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we're using uh, creating Team Pro and we're looking at how much uh, that's used by other companies. And um, in the future, we want to make code sandbox a tool that people can go to um, if they want to build something that they will think like, uh, I'm going to code sandbox because it's the fastest way to build this new application that I want to start. And it, it is. <laughs> right, like, well, that's the that's the whole goal. It's, yeah, it's 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 awesome. So, what is keeping you up at night? Like, what 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 is what's what's what are the bottlenecks at the moment towards that, or is it just a, been a rocket ship? Mm, the bottlenecks are mostly, um, I think, me, um, in the sense that we we were able to raise more money, but we decided not to do it because we thought that. Boss and I, the co-founder is Boss, would be the bottleneck anyway in uh, growing Code Sandbox because we don't have that much managing experience. Right. We need to hire people and we need to set up all these business processes. And it feels like 
the one thing I'm afraid of is uh, you, can, you see companies where you grow a team from two people mm -hmm. to 12 people. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't go faster. People are uh, all developing, but management is so bad that things have to be dropped or um, yeah. the whole planning changes. And then there's not that much progress because the team is much bigger. And I'm afraid that for us, that's... Uh, that's something that I'm trying to prevent, that management goes bad. You are wise beyond your years, my friend. <laughs> um, so uh, where do you draw inspiration from? You're such a creative person. You come up with, you, you seem to be able to prioritize. I've seen, you know, I'm, I followed you on GitHub and I've, I see the way you work on issues and how you triage and, and, and respond. And how, how do you find that? Like, uh, how do you find inspiration? How do you, how do you deal with management? What is your strategy? Um, after Code Sandbox was released, we got a lot of feature requests and issues uh, coming in, especially with feature requests, lots of feature requests. Um, and we decided to create like a list of values and we judge every feature request by those values. Um, I can tell the values if that's... Yeah, go for it. Okay. The first value is that we want to lower the learning curve. So yeah. we want to make it easy for people to learn and get started. The second one is that we want to encourage sharing and discovery. Uh, sharing goes pretty well by sharing the URL, but uh, discovery is something that we really can improve. For example, if you are looking for inspiration or documentation, Code Samox would be the place to go to, and that's our goal. Um, and the last one is local editor experience, so that you don't have to learn a new environment. If you're already either local, or if you're going from, if you're learning from Code Samox and going local, that you don't have to learn a new environment. That's one thing, and. I also have this feeling with Code Sandbox that we're kind of trying to get everything super polished. So at the start for Code Sandbox, we only supported React because we wanted to really polish the React experience and this specific workflow of building uh, React applications. Then when we thought that was the right experience, we expanded to also support Preact and Vue. And so we slowly added more support for different um, templates. And the most important part is that it should feel as a very polished experience and not something that's cobbled together um, of different tools. And um, having that feeling, that's, 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 I think, if you strive for that feeling, and that's how we kind of review all the, all the feature requests that come in. If someone is asking, for example, for Java support in Code Sandbox, that's a, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> that's, a valid, that's a valid feature request. I can understand yeah, it. Yeah, but it's a whole ordeal, right? Like, exactly. IntelliJ is a very powerful editor, like yeah. a lot of stuff to support. Yeah. VS Code isn't that great at it. You know, it's like... That's true. That's it's, true. it's got a lot to work to be done there. Yeah. I and know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. It's, um, it's a great idea. Yeah, but you can't implement it halfway. If you have a no. version that just executes the Java code without the having auto completions, yeah. that's not. Or you refactoring should... support or any of these other like, features that are. Exactly. You shouldn't release it uh, without those features. Yeah. Um, although you should always get a very small MVP as, uh, out as soon as possible. That's interesting. So yeah. So you do a min max approach there. You take like the minimum amount of effort to get like proof of concept and then decide exactly. if it should be made or not. Yeah, and that's why we also always focus on a very small thing. That's why it started with only React because then we could get a good good experience with minimum amount of effort Makes uh, sense. to release. So people who are look to you as inspiration, what, what is your advice to them who are just getting into this open source universe? Um, or any advice for people listening or watching? Um, the most important thing is if you um, if you want to build something, and I advise that you build a lot of things, uh, it's a lot of fun, and especially if other people also find it useful, is that for every idea that you get, for it, like be aware the whole day of all problems that people experience or that you experience yourself, and write down all the problems that you have. And then if you go through the list a couple of weeks later um, with all the problems that you have, and you pick a problem that you want to solve with uh, building something that you can maybe automate it or um, solve the problem itself, then you actually are building something that other people would need as well. Because if you have the problem, then you're probably not the only one with the problem. And uh, yeah, that's a very good thing to uh, work on. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. How can people follow you and connect? Oh, um, you can find me on Twitter. I'm most active on Twitter. It's C-O-M-P-U-I-V-E-S. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for coming. You did an awesome job at React Europe. And uh, we'll Thank hang you. out soon. Thank you.